Welcome to the Hyper Fast Show. We are so excited. Our guest today is Grant Cardone, Uncle G. The number one sales trainer in the world. We had the privilege of visiting him in his studio down in Aventura, right outside of sunny Miami, and it was amazing. We covered a wide range of topics. We sure did. Get ready. So everything from mentorship, leadership, Grant's take on other leaders out there and how to find mentors and the pros and cons of some of the, the choices you might have out there. And, and he even weighed in on some of their advice. And he even gave uh, gave Carrie a little, uh, a bit of an awkward situation for a minute. Ladies, I'm curious how you would have responded to Grant's comment, but watch and you'll see what he had to say. So get ready and listen to what we got to learn from Uncle G. Hey everybody, I'm Carrie Scholl with Hyper Fast Agents. This is my husband, Daniel Lesniak, and we're here today with Grant Cardone. And hey Dan, just so you guys know, Dan shouldn't even be here. He almost deceased himself this weekend <laughs> at an Ironman, right? Yeah, number number five up in Maryland. Yeah, so appreciate you guys coming down. Oh, we're super pumped to be Thank here. Thank you. So we're curious. You've had a lot of mentors, I imagine, in your life. Um, can you tell us some that have had the greatest impact on your career? Well, I, I've done mentoring kind of different. You know, my dad died when I was 10, so he was the guy that I really wanted in my life. And um, and, and I didn't have access. I waited for my uncle, for an uncle. I had three uncles, and I'm like, I know one of these guys come, you know, come help out, take care of me or do something, right? And they never did because they had their own lives going. So really, I learned how to um, maximize mentors from a distance and study people. I've never, ever asked anybody, hey, would you be my mentor? Like never officially going to somebody and say, hey, will you be my guy? But what I have done is I study people. And that could be uh, through the works they've done um, or stuff they've written or programs or interviews. Like I'll, I'll watch, I'll take Warren Buffett for instance and like um, study everything he's ever said, every interview that he's ever done to find out what does this guy really believe? Because things change, no matter, mentors aren't gods, right? So, right. so uh, th th their, their beliefs and their ideas and what they're discovering is gonna change as well. So I typically study one person at a time. I go really, really deep on a guy. Um, and, it, and it's been very helpful to, uh, e even people that are dead, right? So I can go back to some of the guys that pioneered America, like built the railroad systems and the banking system. Like what were those guys doing when they were broke? Wow, yeah. and if you had a top three, for people who are out there. I mean, Buff Buffett's definitely gonna be on the list, right? I mean, they, they, they all do different things, like 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 spiritual giants. Like, what, what did those guys go through? Like, if I can study something that was written by them or someone really, really close to them in the same time that they were living. Hmm. Like, because, you know, 80 years after I'm dead, there, there's gonna be all kinds of stories. Like the stories are already out there. There's stories right now because of because of the online presence of Google and, and how data's collected. I, I read a thing this weekend about my net worth, and and you know half of it was you know close, and, and the other half is just like they're, they're they la la land. They, I don't even know where they got the data from. So people need to be very careful. What I suggest with people on mentors is this: number one, most people have too many. You think you have none, but the truth is everything becomes a mentor now. You know, you mentored me about Iron Man this morning. Oh, they're dangerous. <laughs> Something about that fifth one, right? So that's what I walk away with as an amateur on, you know, Iron Man. I'm like, oh, number five must be dangerous. I wonder what happened. Uh, people get hurt there. He finished. I don't know. You, you see what I'm saying? I get little pieces of data and and from, from people. You're probably an amateur Iron Man. I don't, I don't know. Um, well, I've, I've had a couple that were top 10% in my yeah. age group, but I'm, I'm no, nowhere near close to pros. Yeah, exactly. So, but you see, I got a little piece of data from you, right? So you mentored me on that, and then I'm an amateur learner on the Ironman, so you put that combination together, and you've got a guy with a little bit of data that's going to get hurt. So your or never advice is really go deep with people who are truly oh. experts in what you're studying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And not like, like if I want to study real estate, right? You could listen to every real estate agent. There's plenty of them. There's not going to be any shortage of real estate agents that have a, have an opinion. You know? That's for sure. They, they, <laughs> they've had an opinion. They've had a failure. They've had one success or two. They've done this right or that right. Like the, the, the ideas are unbelievable. I would never study everybody. I would study two or three people. 
Who's the top of the food chain? I would go all the way to the top of the food chain. I would never ask for a meeting. I would never say, hey, Joyce, uh, Joyce Ray, can you meet with me? I understand you're the top person in Beverly Hills. I would look like, how can I find out something that she's produced or done? Like, what is she doing? Oh, she does a lot of charity work. Oh, there's a clue, right? So there's a little clue right there. It has nothing to do with real estate and everything to do with making her the top producer. Brandon Williams and his wife in Los Angeles, like they, 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 sold, they sold my house for me. I would want to find out. You could get access to them. They would talk to you. Um, I would want to find out, can I do some research and find out what they've done? What are they listing? What are they selling? What kind of products are they selling? Where were they before they got to LA? How did they break that market? And if I could get an interview with them, that would be great. You know? Okay. So, so, and then I would ask them, do you make cold calls? Have you made a cold call? Did a cold call ever work? Because they're going to tell you they don't make cold calls. And then, then, then if you dig deep, they're going to be like, yeah, we actually cold call Grant Cardone. <laughs> <laughs> so so you got, you got to be careful when you're getting data from people because sometimes the people that are great at what they're doing, like, like if you, you know, you know how many people picked up Ambien and weed because Elon Musk uses it? <laughs> But but that's not the kind, that's not the the deal I want. That I don't want that I don't want Elon's life right at the result of me using drugs and being stressed out to where I gotta take a pill to sleep at night. So I need I need when I compart I need to compartment compartmentalize when I study Elon, dude. He's probably a drug addict. You know, he he's dependent upon something. Something's out in his life. But but I need to look at the other stuff that he's doing that like gets him to think that big to go to Mars. So I would just tell people, look, you need a mentor, get a mentor. You don't need a meeting. You need a commitment to who in the food chain do you want to replicate. Warren Buffett would be a great one. Steve Jobs, but you got to be a little weary of some of the choices he made. Again, here, here's a guy that was using psychedelics. Could get confusing to people. Oh, I got to do mushrooms to be successful. Actually, you don't. You know. <laughs> so yeah. look at look at a guy like Jay Z. How did he go from selling crack cocaine to 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 being who he is today? You know, th th there's it's access to anybody, but that's good and bad. Okay. And who are you going the deepest with studying today? Uh, you know, I've studied Warren extremely extremely heavy. I've studied. Uh, I mean, you know, if I read one guy's book, like I, I read I read all these black ops books. Um, I read every, everything the guy ever wrote. I read it. Uh, what was the cat's name? He's dead now, but um, not Clancy. Uh, Marchinko? Huh? No, no, it wasn't him. It was, uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember right now, but uh, who else When have it I comes to you, tell us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. You'll think of it. Yeah, I've studied uh, a bunch of the real estate guys. Sam Zell, I've studied uh, like a tremendous amount how, how Sam Zell created a public company. Because okay. that's a play I'm trying to make right now. Cool. So I'm in a study deep. Like, if I was going to become an engineer, I would find the top engineer in the world and study everything that guy wrote, everything, every paper he's done, every interview he did. To, to, to really get a good mentor, it takes a lot of energy on your part, not there. It shouldn't be any on their part because if they're really successful, they're not going to make time to mentor you. It's just not real. That makes sense. So you're one of the top trainers, coaches, mentors in the world now. Why... Why do you enjoy doing that and giving back? Well, I look, I, you know, I, I get asked this question a lot because I, this weekend I was up at uh, uh, NASCAR and, and this guy that's watched my whole career said, well, I mean, all you should do is real estate now. Like, you know, we got a billion dollars of assets under management. I could probably go to three billion in the next three or four years. I can't, I can't train enough people to get to three billion dollars. Like, it's it just not... People don't want education as much as they want to learn how to get their money to work and, and invest in money. So, um, you know, I, I, I like helping people. Like when I buy a real estate deal, it doesn't matter how big it is. It's a thrill buying the deal. You know, it's 90 million bucks. Uh, then I sell it and I make 30. You know, I'm like, wow, dude, I scored. But it's so quick. It's so fast. It's over. You know, purchase, then you sit and wait. Cross your fingers, okay, I wonder if it's going to make money. You start distributing the checks every month. But, like, where, where's the charity in it? You know, where's the, the human, you know, t yeah, I'm providing people with a great place to live. Maybe we'll make the tenants uh, investors in our property. We're looking at doing that. But where's the thrill, right, of, of seeing somebody transform? So the, the um, why, do I, why do I do a conference with 35,000 people? Because it's, I get to meet people, right? I get to have this right here. 
If I was just buying real estate, you guys wouldn't even know who I am. So every, every day of the week, we do a new show because I want to help people. I mean, I genuinely want to help people. And, um, and I want to have the relationships with people, the good and the bad. You know, I get a lot of criticism. Half the people just don't like me because I said this or that or I said it wrong or, you know. And, and, and the other half like me. And, and, and one half stings, right? I mean, it really stinks. I mean, where, where your staff starts saying, oh, you said that, you shouldn't have said that, and you did this, and you, I was in Boston doing the deal, man. I said something, oh, oh my God, every Twitter went crazy, right? And I'm like, <laughs> you know. My brother reminded me, hey, man, remember, it's not the elephants that'll get you, it's the ants, you know? So I love helping people, but it comes with a price, like everything. You haven't made it until you have a certain amount of haters out yeah, there. Yeah, so. you, 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 you got, you're going to have, you're going to have, I mean, nobody that has ever lived on this planet that has ever done anything substantial didn't, didn't get hate and, and criticism. And So it sounds like contribution is a key motivator for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've heard yeah. Tony Robbins talk about the basic human needs. Have you heard him yeah, talk about I mean, that before? Yeah, I've heard, I know the, the Maslow's needs. One of the things he says is when you evolve in life, contribution and growth tend to be where your focus yeah, changes. Yeah, yeah. And actually for Dan and I, um, growing a real estate team, we do, we'll do $300 million in volume this year. So wow. be in the top of wow. the country. Wow, that's awesome. But for us, we started looking at it and we saw, I saw single moms that look to the real estate industry and they don't have a path forward. Right and they don't have mentors yeah. that are willing to take time with uh -huh. them. The people who want to help them are the people in the office who are doing exactly zero business. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Uh, so that's what really motivated us to start Hyperfast Agents. Mm -hmm. We know thousands of dollars for programs like Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership, Craig Proctor's training program, they require travel yeah. and a lot of money. Yeah. So we're super motivated to be contributing and giving back. Yeah, that, and that's awesome. And, and look, real estate agents need it because most of them do not make enough money. Average agent? Yeah. It's 27000 27, It's ridiculous. This year. It's, it's, that's poverty, by the way. $28,000 uh, is a poverty level. People with less than two years in the industry, the average is 7000 Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So so it's, it's a great thing that you're doing because people do need help. First of all, it's a great industry. Most of the real estate agents that I have met, unfortunately, in my career are subpar at best i wonder if they're even committed like like did you get in this just so you could have your uh, a business card like you could have got a business card without becoming right. an agent right like yeah. 99 <laughs> cents on the internet right yeah yeah exactly yeah. so so it's, it's a great thing that you're doing that to make mentorship and and leadership and uh information that people typically couldn't have and couldn't afford available well and for us we're not looking for the person who's not committed mm -hmm. like this group won't be right for them but for people who really want to learn and grow as an example, our agents, the average agent after being on our team for a year, average is two hundred and fifty two thousand dollars wow. in income. Wow. So if we can wow. produce agents on our team that are in the top one percent, what can we do for agents around the country? Yeah, that's awesome. We can compress time and help them grow. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's our mission now. We're looking to expand what we've done with our team into something nationally where we can teach, mentor, create a network through the hyperfast agent inner circle. So, you know, why do you think things like that are a must for agents starting out or looking to scale their business? Well, well, one is, you know, it, it's really important for you guys to do it for yourself, right? Because again, again, this, this, when you, when you hit a certain plateau in your life, like it, m money, money doesn't matter. I, I talk about money a lot, a lot because I think it is a very important uh, motivator for people, even, even in Maslow's needs, right? Even in the, the basic needs, base, basic needs is I need money, okay? But even when I get to the charitable, even when I get to the higher sense of purpose and where duty, like, oh, what's my duty? I need money to actually propel that, right? You, you guys are going to spend a lot of money putting a conference on to bring the right people together mm -hmm. in marketing, tremendous amounts of energy and creative and stress and time Okay, I got to put this event together. The hotel wants money. Uh, you, you, you know, a lot of energy and effort goes into that. Now, now, why is that important? Because you start bringing the right people together. You're literally creating masterminds, you know. And it's hard today to do that because I can I can sit on Instagram and just be entertained all day long. I mean, it's <laughs> affecting everything. It's affecting everything. Theaters are being affected. NASCAR is being affected. Why would I go? H half the stadium at NASCAR was empty. Like, I'm like, what? Wow. They, they can't get people to show up. 
Is that because they lost their, their top racers? Is it because people don't have the time? Is it because people have other options? Is it football, Instagram, Facebook, family, whatever? So you're, you're gonna be getting the top of the top, the creme de la creme to say, hey, this is a priority. I wanna be around people. I'm gonna take the time away from my family. I'm gonna spend energy and money going to a destination in order to, to be with the right group of people. By the way, all the greats do it, okay? If you study the, the, the Warren Buffetts and the Bill Gates, these guys travel two and three times a year. They leave their home, they leave their little, their little gate space, you know, their little Bill Gates, my, my little universe where they're the king. And they travel to Davos uh, in Switzerland, they travel to Wyoming, they travel to another secret spot in the world three times a year, and they all meet. They huddle up and say, hey, how are we going to freaking crack the planet? <laughs> right? How are we going to change things? How are we going to help things? That's how Warren Buffett and Bill, that's how Bill and Melinda got Warren on the charity thing, giving all their money away. Great things happen when people gather. This has been said, every, every religion talks about when two or more come together, great things happen. And, and, and the fact that you are... Uh, you're, you're, you're making it accessible to people, but you do charge something to where people have to say, wait a minute, this cost me this. The money's not really the issue for people, it's really the time. Yep. Do I want to get away for two days or three days? Do I want to get on a plane and go there? It's e effort and energy. But you see, that's the very people that will be there. If it was free in your local town, people are like, come to Chicago, come here, come here. Oh, why, because it's easy? Man, what, you know, what, what, what about you? Like everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. You know? <laughs> everybody wants to be the millionaire, nobody wants to write the check. Everybody wants the listing, nobody wants to make the call. So what you guys are doing is when you get around great people, greatness, like I, I start feeding the greatness in me. Events have been one of the best things I've ever been to, whether they're my events or somebody else's event, where I meet one person that, that literally changes the way I think or, or the way I, you know, the actions I take. Well, that's, that's what we're looking to do with the Hyperfast Sales Bootcamp. It's going to be December 7th, Washington, D.C. I think it's going to be the premier sales event in the D.C. area. Great way to kick off your 2019. And for me, you know, events, just to touch on, they've, they've always given... It's a great me... location, by the way. I know Tyson's Corner. Everything's expensive there, though. It is. So you guys had to spend a lot of money to, to pick a hotel there. The, ho the, the rooms are cheap. To stay in a room, but the conference rooms they, they really get you on. So expensive. Well, well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. But and I, you're not cheap either. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> it's all relative. Yeah. So I'll gonna, lose money on the deal after I fly up there and back. Okay. So just in the takeoff. Um, I don't know what 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 what. Just you guys in the takeoff. Pay you. <laughs> you're yeah. worth it. But but anyway, anyway, we want to help a lot of people, right? It's not it's not always about money. You guys got to get around the right people. You got you got you got a chance. You got a chance. They're putting on the event. They're writing a check to me to come up there, and and uh, th this is I only do like maybe six public events a year, and the rest of them they're events that we do, um, and it's a, it's a great opportunity for you guys to. to well, we're honored. That. Yeah, we, that, yeah. we are. No, thank you. Excited. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Um, and when do you when do you do? <laughs> April. Okay. All right. So number three. And we're going to be there when in January in, in December. Yes. So yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll still be four months out. Okay. Yeah. Is it your baby? Yeah. How do you how do you, how do you how do you know? Uh, you don't know for still sure. Still on the DNA test. Yeah. Sure. I got two kids. Very funny guys. Very funny. Well, I'm just saying we don't. He don't know. I don't know. You know. <laughs> You're the only one that knows for sure. You know. My wife. My wife. She. she we got two beautiful kids, right? But I mean, I don't know for sure. <laughs> They, she knows. They kind of have your walk a little good. Well, yeah, but that's just because they've been around me. <laughs> I can um, get her kid to walk like me if I if I'm around her long enough. No, that's influence. Yeah. That's influence. That's what, <laughs> is that where we're going, influence? <laughs> um, so, as the number one sales trainer in the world, yeah. Um, why do you consider it our moral obligation yeah. to become better? the best yeah. salespeople. Yeah, yeah, well, particularly again in real estate, like real estate agents, you know, the, the ones I meet and have met, and I've met a lot of them, typically hate this idea of being a salesperson. And uh, I mean, you don't have, you never hear any of them say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a salesperson, I'm a real estate agent. 
I got my test. I got my license. Yeah, but what'd you sell? That's all I care about. Like if I if I'm calling if you're gonna list my house, all I want to know, my number one question, my question on every to every real estate agent, would you sell last year? If I call your agency and I'm looking to list or buy something, when I when I moved from LA to Miami, I called uh, I called one one group here and I said, who's the top agent in your company? I don't want to talk to anybody else. Top of the food chain wants to talk to the top of the food chain. So so now that could be arrogant, it could be conceited, it could be just a nasty nasty man that I am. But why would I want to deal with second and third and fourth? <laughs> yep. You know. I don't want seconds. I want I want I want the meal the way I want the meal. I want if I'm listing my house, I want the best broker in the market. Then I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions. What's the comp? What's the best place to live? Do you know the inventory? Most most real estate agents don't even know the inventory in their town. And I can sitting at my home bang out on Zillow or Trulia and, and know everything in the market, what it's sold for, what it's been taxed for, what it's been assessed for, and you guys don't know. So I wanna to talk to the best. People are so like, people are time starved right now. So if you don't know your game, if you're not all in on your game, if you're not fully committed, you're gonna make 28,000 bucks a year. You're gonna hate your job. Yeah. You're gonna hate the clientele, because that's what happens. When you, get, when you get down, when you get down, when your income's down at 28,000, 50,000, 70,000, you're just gonna hate your job. I hate showing houses, I hate open houses, I hate, because you're not getting results. Because every open house that, First guy that walks in on an open house on a Sunday afternoon and you sell him, he's like, I'm buying this place right now. All of a sudden you like open house. <laughs> Something changed all of a sudden. Problem is you can't duplicate that enough because it was just luck in the right place at the right time. So you need to be in the right place at the right time in the right industry with the right skills. I've met, I've met a lot of people introverts and extroverts. I've met people that are young, people that are old, people that like sales and don't like sales that all know if they trained and educated and came up with an exact formula, they could all be better at sales. Whether it's closing the deal, negotiating the deal. Very difficult, by the way. The house transaction is complicated. It so, is. You know, you, you want a higher price to sell it. I want a lower price to buy it. And he's got to figure out how to get both of us to like, let's roll. So you're really a heavy, heavy role in negotiating and making sense and of And a deals. lot of money and emotion on the line. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. So the emotion is yeah. the part that, but going back to what you said <clears throat> about knowing the market, knowing my personal philosophy for agents out there, you have to be better than just knowing that. You have to know what's not on the market mm -hmm. that he can't get yeah. access yeah. to yeah. without you, right? Then yeah. you're valuable. Yeah. If I tell you, if you say, this is what I'm looking for, and I say, well, down the street, uh -huh. here's a few opportunities that we have that may interest you. Right, I like that. You're not calling anybody else. Yeah, the yeah. Game over. Okay, yeah. wow, she has inventory that doesn't even no one knows about. Yeah. Right. And and, and you know, I there's just little things the agent can say and do that that can be a turnoff. Like people need to know what those things are today, and those would be some of the things that we'll be discussing at the at the event at your event on. Hey, what do you say? What don't you say? You know, how do you answer? What's the comp? Does the comp even matter anymore? You know, like, does it matter that that house sold down the street? It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that house is gone. Okay, a comp is a historical. It's not what's going to happen next. How do you tell a guy he's not paying too much? How do you tell somebody when they're wrong, when they're trying to get too much? And it, it is hard. It's not like the stock market where the price of Apple is going to be this yeah, exactly. anywhere in the world. It, yeah, yes. Yeah. The market's not efficient. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, what, what are the top three pieces of advice you'd give real estate agents for closing? Get to, to get to closing? Tyson's Corner, get to Tyson's <laughs> Corner, get to Tyson's Corner. Like, you guys need to get around the right information. So you're either going to buy it from me. You, got, you, you, need to ed, you need to educate yourself how to communicate with a person that has money. Like, in your case, you guys have to negotiate with two people. i got to negotiate with her that controls this piece of inventory that pays me. And I got I got I got to negotiate with you that wants to give money for this piece of inventory. Okay, like I have to get these two worlds together. So you're really a mediator. You're a negotiator. Like you're talking about the highest levels of negotiation in a deal, which, by the way, is not sales. Sales would be convincing her to give me the listing, or convincing him to come see the house. I convinced him to do that. Negotiating is bringing two parties together and saying, "Hey, everybody wins here." And and. <clears throat> I, I got a buddy, he's done $25 billion for the real estate sales. Wow. $25 billion. That's impressive. Dollars. Okay. This guy, every time I get up the phone with him, I, I, I tell Ryan in there, I'm like, dude, this guy's such a pro. 
He's dealing with Blackstone, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs. You're dealing with top of the food chain. You're dealing with, like, like every person you're dealing with is a killer whale. Like, like everybody's Arcus, or you know, <laughs> and 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 it's like, how how do you? And and the only thing that's going to be eaten is another Arca, right? Uh -huh. So so these are like these are like, Cannibal. this is Nat Geo on super steroids, and everybody has to be great, and they're not, by the way. Okay, I just sold a deal to uh, to a group that owns twenty thousand apartments. I sold it for ninety one million dollars. The whole thing's a grind. Okay, he's trying to get a four million dollar clip. And and I'm working. I'm trying to find out in the deal: is he retrade me? Is he retrade me because it's legit? Is he retrade me because it's legit, but it's just a game and a sport to him? Is he retrading me because it's a sport, but it's not necessary to get the four? So, so I have to work through all this. These are super professional people. These aren't people that are buying a house every seven years or 10 years. These are people that are doing deals every day. And so like when you can start figuring out how to negotiate with people, it's, it's so much easier in residential real estate because you're dealing with a bunch of amateurs. I mean, no, no, well, that, but, no, that no, makes the, it easier and harder though. The, the agent's not an amateur. The, the, oh, the, believe me, the agent, I, but, I but, believe the agent is an amateur yeah, I agree. most of the time, which is why they need us. Yeah, I agree. Right? I agree with that. Well, what I'm yeah. saying is the buyer and the seller are typically amateurs. You, they are. You, you're not doing it every day, right? So I'm an amateur golfer. It's more emotion than but that, yeah. more that emotion. emotion leads to massive chaos. It, exactly. Because it, you can't lead them to make a logical it, exactly. decision when this is where they had family it, Christmas for exactly. 15 years. Exactly. And uncertainty when uncertainty drops. Okay. You don't need to worry about the price dropping or going up. That price is not the issue in real estate. It's the uncertainty. I don't know. When I don't know, I can't make decisions. So one of the things we'll be talking about at your event is how do you create create certainty inside of the customer, yeah. not you. Like like my certainty doesn't matter as much as hers. If I'm trying to get the listing, her certainty about me matters more than my certainty about me. Mm -hmm. How it, you convey that yeah. sense of certainty yeah, to it, someone else? Yeah, with data, with data, awesome right? With data, with 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 third party validation. Yeah. You know, not her going on Google and or, or, or Zillow and shopping by herself because she, she's just going to get into the land of more and starting. Oh, you see, there's a five bedroom right there. <laughs> it's it, ours should be two seventy eight too, right? So so they get they get wrong pieces of data. And by the way, they're going to go talk to their uncle and their aunt and their mom and their dad and their, every amateur in the world that sold one piece of real estate their entire life. Or sometimes none. We get the coworker that's yeah. never bought or sold a home that's very yeah. opinionated. Oh, yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Sh you should only be paying a four percent fee. You know, so so a lot of lot of experts. You know, you know, it's where you get your Iron Man advice from. <laughs> so what about advice for a new agent just starting out, just getting in the business? You know a lot about residential real yeah. estate. What are the top three things you would tell them to do? I, I would tell you to study the top of the food chain. You know, don't listen to everybody. Like you need to put, you need to put, uh, you need to put um, blinders on, and you need to s s stay at events. Like you need to stay at events where the top people are coming to, because the problem in real estate, network marketing, uh, entry, anything that's an entry, is you're around a lot of you're around a lot of average people. And average is going to kill you. I wrote about this in Be Obsessed or Be Average. Like, you got to be obsessed about your career. Otherwise, you're going to be average and you're going to hate average. Yeah. Everybody hates average, except the people that have made sense of it. Like, you, you've just made sense of the water getting this hot. You know, you don't understand. You're just frying. You're in the pan. You've been, they just kept raising it a little bit. It's how, you, it's how you boil a frog, right? You don't just drop them in. He'll jump out. You don't drop them in at 115. You just keep raising it one degree and another degree. And 115 days later, he's cooked. So this is what happens to most real estate agents. They come in, they're excited, they're jacked up, and then they spend all this time with their license, and then they don't learn anything else. Yeah. Like that's that's the that that's the that's the entry level to the game. It's like walking into the club. You got through the doors. Now can you become a member? And the best memberships are going to require some some probably money. Definitely going to be some time, definitely going to be connections, but it'll be worth it, right? You're better off going to a better country club and paying more money and getting access to better people. That's why events are so important for people to stay with great people. And you can't just get that at an office. So if you're at Remax or Keller Williams, 
Marcus and Millichap, any of them. You just, name, just go all the way up the commercial list. Most of the people that you're surrounded by are average people. Yeah. That's not a hit on human on mankind, but mankind is pretty average. Well, and the sad part for agents is the broker would not be the broker, no offense to brokers out there, if they weren't average, yeah. right? Because the broker, if they were crushing it and they had an unbelievable team and they were super profitable, why would they go lead an office and give up their team many times? Uh -huh. And then they have 200 people that are there trying to learn from them. They're just trying to put out fires and avoid liability. Yeah. yeah. So people need to seek yeah, and I think there's probably some great brokers out there that are scaling their business out that didn't get stuck just in that one thing, you know. But so, so like, it, 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 you got to be around people that want to continue to achieve that next level. What would your top three pieces of advice be to an agent looking to scale their business? They've already had some success, yeah. but they need to move it beyond themselves, beyond just the solo. You got to recruit. I mean, recruiting's got to be. If you want to scale anything, you got to recruit. So the number one thing is to recruit people. And <clears throat> if you're trying to grow a business, you need people. You can't do it by yourself. Nobody should do it by themselves, by the way. Not even the real estate agent. The real estate agent should be thinking about how do I recruit an assistant? How do I recruit somebody to do my paperwork? How do I recruit? How do I start building a team right now? The person making 28000 coming in, how do I get my test? How do I start bringing in other people? Like start thinking about playing the game at a bigger level. It's no more work. I got 100 people, 115 people here. It's less work than when I'm doing four people. It's more problems, it's more headaches in, in some areas, but, but, but the payoff is much bigger, right? So yeah. some people say they don't need all that, okay? Look, you're not, gonna do, you're not gonna run your business whether you're an agent, a broker, you're not gonna run a business by yourself. Nobody's ever done anything great by, by themselves. So if you have a great product, if you have a great service, if you're committed to your business, grow it. And so I would tell them, number one, recruit. Number two, you got to be a leader. That means you got to be the best at your game. You know, like you got to be, you got to keep learning. And so when we, when we moved to Miami, I was told, you know, you're going to be hiring people from Venezuela and Argentina. <laughs> and, and man, the, the work culture is more difficult. And I'm like, well, I'll just have to be better. So the third thing I would tell you is just got to keep educating yourself on, on the game. There, there's so much change going on right now. So with Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Snapchat and like, are your customers there? I, I live in a building just a mile from here. And I said, you guys ought to have me do your social media. And the guy that owns the building said, we, we don't think our buyer's there. Oh gosh. <laughs> I, said, oh. I said, dude, I live here. <laughs> I live here. These people said the same thing. They, they don't think they're Gulfstream buyers uh, uh, on, on social media. I'm like, I just wrote you a check. <laughs> Like, yeah. but, but so the, the people the are oblivious, is that they're oblivious. Oh, the 63 year old's not there. The 26 year old's not on Facebook, whatever. You know, what if he does wander over there? You know, and where is he if he's not there? Is he at Snapchat? Is he at Twitter? I don't know. But the real estate agents, most real estate agents are not using social media correctly. You're showing your listing. That, I don't care about your listing. That's not what I care about in the moment. I care about, do I know you? Do I recognize your name? Are you obscure to me? Did I hear about you once? Did I hear about you a second time? Oh, now your email matters. Now that piece of mail you dropped off hits me. Oh, wow, that's that person that. Mm -hmm. You know, I need, I, need, I need to know a lot more about you than just the listing that you got or the open house that you're doing. So we'll be talking about that That's as well. an awesome topic yeah. that we'll be addressing at the, yeah. at the event, how to leverage social media. Yeah, and by the way, I should not know how to do this. You should so, not know? No, because of my age. Like, oh. It, 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 above it, the demographic. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's, not, it's not my space. It's not, it didn't come at the perfect time for me, which tells you that I'm still doing the things that I just said. I'm recruiting constantly. I'm looking at my leadership skills. I'm confronting my own weaknesses. And I'm continuing to educate myself on how, how to do things. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Like to, uh, Wednesday, I'll be at Baylor talking to a bunch of guys, kids that are 19 years old. You know, I'll, I'll learn as much from them speaking at that university as, as, uh, as they'll learn the school, the football team? It's for, it's for nice. entrepreneurs, the entrepreneur yeah. school, yeah. Very cool. All right, last question. Yeah, we I'm doing that for free, by the way. So if that makes you feel terrible. We want to be a fly on the wall for that, just so we can <laughs> yeah, soak yeah. in more information yeah, yeah, from you. Yeah. Um, we all have moments of self-doubt. Uh -huh. Can you tell us about a recent experience where you've had self-doubt? Oh, my God. 
You got three hours? <laughs> constant, constant, okay? Like constant. Every deal I've ever bought, we just closed a $92 million deal. I just lost a deal that was another $95 million. Lost it uh, Sunday, yesterday. Oh, so, you know, wow, I should have I should have pursued that deal sooner. Like, so that, the, the doubt's around me all the time. Like, it, people think that I'm Mr. Confident and, you know, but look. I, I, I'm a human being. I, I got doubt all the time about everything I do. I must spend enough time with the kids, you know. Uh, did I pay enough time? You know, did I spend enough time with Scarlett by herself? Did I, I should have done the mountain climbing the other day with her on the walls, uh, whatever, whatever that's called. Should have done the rock climbing thing. I didn't do it. You know, like constant. So how do you deal? Did with I buy the right plane? Should, should I bought? Maybe I should have gone smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have gone bigger. Like, like it's just like. And I, then you get on it and you're just cured of that doubt, right? Well, you know, whatever, right? I'm like, I'm the only person on a 14-person jet, right? I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> so so then, 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 then the other day there was like 10 people on it, and I'm like, oh, there's too many people on here. Like, like, like look, everybody's got self-doubt. And how do you deal with it? Well, I don't walk on fire to solve it, and I definitely don't jump in a cold plunge, right? So, so and, and I don't use drugs or alcohol to solve it because you're not going to get rid of it. So I'm not trying to handle it. So what I do is I just keep showing up. This has worked for me for 35 years. I keep showing up. I don't medicate. Uh, I stay active. So whether it's a workout, whether it's showing up in the studio, number one rule for me for all the success is show up. If I get an invitation to anything, like I'm trying to show up no matter what. If it's a party invite, uh, the Republicans invite me, the Democrats invite me, I don't care who it is, man. It, uh, uh, Opera House invites me or a rapper invites me, I'm saying yes. I say yes first, and then I figure out, okay, how do I get out of it later, <laughs> right? <laughs> but first thing I want to do is say yes. You guys invite me to your deal, I'm trying to figure out how to say yes, okay? I get a chance to look at somebody's house or go to a party, I'm trying to say yes. So what I try to do is show up. 80% of the time, nothing comes out of it. I'm disappointed. I went to NASCAR this weekend, don't tell anybody. I mean, <laughs> you know, would I do it again? I don't know, you know? But I showed up. I don't have any regrets that I showed up. So at least I know I went. If it's something good comes out of it, great. If nothing comes out of it, which probably nothing great will come out of it. Uh, but at least I showed up, right? So nothing happens good for me if I don't show up. And, and so I have tremendous uh, doubt. What do you call it? Self-doubt. Self-doubt, yeah. You know. It doesn't stick with you for very long, though, does it? Uh, well, well, moving on to the next thing, so it's like, okay, let me just move on, right? So, so again, I, I need to be around people that are pushing through the doubt, right? And, and that's, a, again, why your, your event, going to events like that, you're going to be in, in a room full of people. What are you going to have? How many people are you going to have at your event? Four, five, 500 and 1,000. Yeah, so, you, you know, it's a, small, it's a small group. You can get to know people. Very intimate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have 35,000 people here for three days at, at Miami at Marlin Stadium. So, I mean, 500 people, you can get to meet everybody there. And, and by the way, that's important. What are you guys going through? What do you, how do you move through doubt? How do you move through uncertainty? And so I'm just trying to stay in the game all the time, right? So one deal I buy, did I pay too much? The other deal I missed, oh, I must have not paid enough. Both of them I'm a loser on. Like I literally feel like a loser either way. Okay, did I pay too much? Did I, did I get the right debt? Did I not get the right debt? Then I got to move to the next thing because the next thing is what keeps my, my mind really occupied, right? Move on to the next thing. So it's almost so, like you're saying, take a second, acknowledge it, and then move past it because it doesn't serve you to linger. I, I mean, I, I, I just think that it, it, it's, it's not a game. I'm not trying to handle it, right? I don't try to manage time either. So there's cer certain things I just don't try to handle. Like, I'm not trying to get rid of my doubt. I'm 60 years old. I've had doubt uh, since I knew, uh, since my mama said, be careful, you know? You're going too fast. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Yeah. Don't eat that food. Don't touch yourself. I'm like, dang, dang. I, I was digging on that. Now I can't do any. I can't touch that. I can't touch me. I can't touch anything, right? So, uh, you're gonna, you know, I mean, everything that I've done in my life, somebody told me to be aware of. You're going to get married. You're going to be unhappy. You're going to have kids. It's going to take a lot of time. Like, you start a business. It's going to be a problem. You get into real estate. You're going to have tenants calling you. Everything is a warning, right? And I'm like, hey, you know what? These people don't have any clue what they're talking about. 99% of the advice you get on this planet is freaking garbage advice from people that quit. So I'm not trying to get rid of doubt. I'm not trying to manage time. Um, I'm just trying to do the most I have with the time to not be in doubt. And the only way I know how to do that 
is to do something. I'm not in doubt when I'm doing. When you were doing that, that with your triathlon, that's the only thing you were doing at that moment. Fully engaged. 70% 70, 70 of people are disengaged at work today. By, by, by survey, 70%. I think that number is probably closer to like 90 or 95%. But sad. It's sad, dude. It's terrible. You're at a job eight hours, nine hours a day. But look how many people say, oh, a job is a bad thing. A job's not a bad thing. A job's a good thing. Having purpose, having some place to go, being around other people, being by your damn self, that, that is a bad thing. There's nothing good that comes from being by yourself. So that's why, like events like you do, those have never hurt me. Every event I've ever gone to, oh, wow, I met somebody, okay? Did I have a delay? Yeah, okay. Did I have to leave home? Yeah, man, it was good to get out, right? It's always made me better. Moving, moving has always made me better. There's something about getting out of my comfort, uh, my, my, my proximity to where I know and control everything, and I know the refrigerator, and I know the living room, and I know the noises, and everything is safe, there's something about when I leave that, that helps me. As much as I complain, I complain the whole way, by the way. Dang, why am I, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Okay, <laughs> why am I, oh gosh. You know, but when I get there, I'm like, I'm so glad I did this, you know? So, uh, you know, you guys doing events like these, it gives me an opportunity to go someplace and do something and be of, be of uh, service to other people. So I have a follow-up question, kind of building on that. It sounds like you really love what you do. Yeah. You love getting out there, love working, love grinding. Uh, one of my favorite interviews uh, that you did was on CNBC when the, the, the lady asked you about her, her college professor, told oh, her to uh, yeah, 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 do, yeah, do yeah, what yeah, they love and a, the money will follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, what does he know about money? And we, we recently saw... And Gary, that was Ch Cheddar, uh, Cheddar, Cheddar, yeah, Cheddar talking yeah, about something. We, yeah, yeah. We, we recently we saw Gary V, and he yeah. was really big on do what you love, but, but if it's something that doesn't make money, don't worry about it. So how do you kind of juxtapose that, you know, work hard for money, but, yeah. but do what you love, and how do you piece that together? Well, I think, I, I, I don't think Gary, Gary, I think Gary, Gary's just a young man that's confused when he says that, okay? Gary, Gary's fortunate enough to love what he does, but most people, most people do not love what they do. So, most people are not as talented as Gary, unfortunately, right? Because they're not doing it enough. Uh, Gary, Gary, Gary's done a lot of interviews. Gary's spoken on a lot of stages, okay? Gary, Gary uh, has the opportunity to travel and be on stage for 30 or 40 minutes. Most of the people watching this, you don't have that luxury. You're living in the same town that you've lived in. You're calling on people that you know in a town that is very familiar to you, okay? It's not like you're gonna show up tomorrow in uh, Singapore and there's gonna be thousands of people come out and say, oh, we love you, we love you. Shit, man, that's easy. It's easy to like that job. You're a star, right? When you're, when you're selling a piece of real estate and people don't wanna take your phone call, and you called six times and they don't want to take it and you lost the listing and they said you didn't do your job and you didn't close the deal and the, and the seller didn't take the first offer which you told the guy, take the damn offer, dude, it's good and they didn't do it. You don't love your job right now. You don't even love yourself. You don't love your kids. You don't love your husband. You hate everybody, right? Because you had a failure. So it's easy for the guy on stage. I know a lot of these guys. Love what you do, man. Love what you do. Steve Jobs said this. Don't work for the money. Find what you love and do that. Okay? He was rich when he said that to everybody. <laughs> it's easy to say when you've already banked your money, right? So again, this goes back to what you asked about the mentors. You gotta know where a guy is giving you data from. What point of his career is he, is he giving you data? I would tell everybody out there, you need to work for money. There is nothing wrong, okay? It is on the basic needs. And by the way, it will fund your highest duty of purpose and charity. And, and so there is no, you want to take care of your mom? You want to be the hero in your household? You want to be freaking Batman and Superman? Superman and Batman needed freaking coin, okay? <laughs> they needed, they got to have their castle, man, okay? And, the, and the, more, the more of a hero you want to be, the more you need to fund the activities so that you can, uh, what was the town Batman was saving? Gotham. Gotham, dude. The more money you need. I was a billionaire, bro, okay? <laughs> Superman, I don't know if he had any bank or not, but, but I know this, you know? He gonna need some bank, okay? Cause, cause Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor's coming yeah. after him with his. Yeah. So you guys that all are hating on money, you see again, you, you listen to Gary, Gary says, find what you love. Some of you guys love, y'all y'all think you love football on Sunday, but you should be at a damn open house. So you gotta, I, I don't do what I love. I do what will fund my activities. 
so that I can make a difference on this planet. Because what you love is about you. And this is the problem I have with that whole message. Um, do what you love is about you. It's very selfish. It's extremely selfish. Oh, do what you love. That's about you, man. If, if I might sleep in. I've slept in this morning. I was feeling, oh, man, I think I'm going to love my sleep. Okay? But, but I had an obligation, right? So I, I, don't, I don't do what I love. I do what I, I need to do to get funding so that I can do the next thing. Every great thing that you want to do on this planet will take money. There's not one thing that won't take money. You, you want to take care of your mom? You know, my mom died when she was 89. I wanted to take care of her the way she wanted to be taken care of. Not in a hospital. Took money to do that, man. Okay. Hey, Grant, you need to get down here. I had to get on a plane and fly over there right there. Okay. My, my baby was just born five days later. Uh, actually, they could have called me three days before and said, hey, you need to get down here. So, but we were waiting for Sabrina to be, be uh, born. And you need to get down here. I didn't have a jet. Okay, I, I got to stop everything I'm doing. I got to stop my business. I got to get down there. Like none of that mattered, right? Money didn't matter. And, it, and, and, and fortunately, I had been working for the money so that I could do what was necessary to go down there. That doesn't stop my mom from dying. But at least she, get to, she got to die where she wanted, with me, not worried about both my money and my mother dying. And, and right now, people are making... And, and again, this thing that Gary does, it just kills me because it's like, it's so stupid, dude. You know, he was in my studio and, 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 and he, uh, somebody said, hey, would you rather, do, do you think somebody should make 40,000 bucks and work for themselves or 40 grand and work for somebody else? And he's like, well, you should definitely work for yourself. I said, dude, no, nobody should work for 40 grand. Nobody, nobody in America should earn $28,000 a year. Nobody, because you don't need to. Like, get your skills to where you can earn 280, like what you guys are doing. What's your average? 252. 250? After a year. 250 grand after 12 months, man. Show me that program I'm hooking up. Yeah. Awesome. And, by the way, then you can, you will love what you do. Because you'll start loving it more. That and resonates if you, with me. When huh? you win. Dude, when you win, man. You when people it. pay you. When people pay you, you tell me one of these celebrity movie stars get paid $25 million for a movie. They don't love that. <laughs> you know. And even if you don't love that movie that you're doing for $25 million, at least you can make sense of it now. I'm on location, away from my home, away from my kids. If I do $25 million, I'll keep twelve. Maybe I'll do something good with it. Well, great. Should we tell them about the... Uh yeah, let's the free uh, ticket yeah, offer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anybody that signs up for your event, I'll include a seat to our uh, event in February, February first, second, and third. That's incredible. It's twenty five hundred dollars seat. Amazing. Yes, yeah. in Marlins, Marlins Marlin Stadium, Stadium brand new stadium, beautiful. It's in Miami, February first, second, third. It's a uh, the weather's freaking phenomenal here in February, like crazy, unbelievable. So. Um, it's a three-day event. It's going to be the largest entrepreneur event ever held on the planet. So it's going to wow. be an epic historical event. And uh, some phenomenal speakers are going to be there. I'll be there all three, day, uh, all three days, obviously, speaking. I'm the host of the event. And this is our third one we've done. They've been super successful. If you've ever been to a big, large conference, I'll promise you this will exceed uh, every expectation you have of an event. 35,000 people. 35,000 people for three days. You'll make some connections. You'll, you'll meet people from all over the world. People coming from Hong Kong, Singapore, Taipei, uh, all over the world. Okay. Oh, wow. John says Canada. Yeah. Every, everywhere. <laughs> Mexico, all over. So you're going to be able to make connections. A lot of these people are coming in, by the way, because they're interested in what I'm doing in real estate. And they're coming in to, to, to learn about big conferences, how to put them on, how to, how to network. Like networking is like ne when you can network then and you can't network from home, okay? Facebook is not a networking opportunity. <laughs> Facebook is a spectator. It's killing people. They just watch it, the feeds. So, and, and hey, keep watching my feed, okay? If you quit watching, <laughs> don't quit watching my, my, my job is to make my stuff interesting enough to where you're like, I gotta see the, what this guy's saying right now. But, but, but the problem with that is I made you a spectator. Okay, so at these three-day events like the one you guys are doing, the, these are these are gatherings, right? They're they're moments for people to come together. You're not coming together to watch Jay Z and Beyonce. That's a spectator event. By the way, I do those. I was just at Beyonce. I want to go meet people, 
right? I want to have a chance to learn something. I want to have a chance to walk away with a connection that I can either buy something from, sell something to. And, and we'll do a Q&A. Will we have time for a q and I'll do a, I'll do a thing on some of the things I what talked about. What we're going to be doing is a social media. Everyone will put in their questions and we'll pick okay. the top three and we'll go through those. Okay. All right. Yeah. So everyone will have an opportunity to ask Grant questions. Good. Um, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Wasn't that incredible? We, Dan and I learned a lot from that. So one of my key takeaways was that people may be following, I may be following people who aren't the expert at a particular topic. And because they're amazing at one thing, that's what I should be following them with. So if I, if I hired a tennis coach and then they gave me advice about hockey, that would be the wrong call, right? And sometimes in life you get caught up because you really admire someone and their business sense, but maybe their strength is the finances in a business and you're listening to their advice about marketing. So I thought that was an interesting point. And he says, study the people who are amazing at something a lot deeper. I can apply that to my own life and it, it definitely resonated for me. What about for you, Dan? Yeah, so I, I learned that it's definitely, uh, you know, a good idea to go deep on the mentors that you find. Like, like find the best. If, you know, if you want to be an engineer, like Grant said, find the best engineer and, and go deep on them. Study them for a long time. And, and you don't necessarily have to be uh, coached by them directly. And in fact, a lot of the people who are the best at what they do aren't going to coach you. They just don't have the time or the, or the passion. You know, their passion is being the best thing that they are. So you know, you may not get to get that direct mentorship. It's it's rare, but but don't be afraid to just go deep and steady them for for a long time. Like you know, Grant said he's done with Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and and others like that. So you know, I, I learned a ton from from him. To, I hope you did too. And I actually, I have one other point. As this applies to real estate, if you're in the real estate world, I think a lot of people follow coaches because they're selling a lot of homes, because they're successful. Now, some people don't even know how many homes their coach has actually sold because it seems to be a little gray. It seems to be a round number. That's part of doing your diligence before you study someone. You need to understand what their net income is, what they're, what, what they're spending on what, right? Because you want to go deep enough to really understand the numbers. So I would say one of the trickiest places to find the right coaching is actually the real estate industry. So study their numbers. Go deep on their business before you choose to follow their advice. That's, that's, that's some great advice because there are a ton of coaches out there that have never sold a home. There's a ton that did, but it was 10, 20 years ago. So they're not in the market. They're not like, yeah. you know, in the, in the trade, learning at the, at the ground level, what's working, what's not. So, you know, even if they did sell a bunch of homes, if it was 10 years ago, I mean, heck, if it was like a year ago, things changed so quickly. So you really need to be... Uh, particularly careful in real estate, you know, who you choose as, as your mentor, who you choose as your coach. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for joining Dan and I and Uncle G. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you next time.